Certified personal trainer, welcome back to the channel. And that is not how you're supposed to use a suspension training system. So most of us are at home now and you may have purchased some home gym equipment to stay fit over these quarantine times as most commercial gyms are now closed. So first off, suspension trainers are amazing. They train the body differently than using free weights or machines. They almost incorporate the entire body during each exercise. And most of all, they're cost and space effective. Plus, they come in little bags, so you can take them wherever you want to go. When you're going on vacation, going camping, you can take it wherever you want to go. So some of the topics that we're going to be discussing today are the components, the setup, the adjustments, and some safety guidelines about suspension trainers. All right, starting off with our components, we have at the very bottom here are going to be our foot cradles. There are going to be different versions of this and we're going to be able to use these to stick our heels in here, put our toes in here so we can use some leg exercises with our suspension trainer. Next up is going to be our handles. These are where we're going to be grabbing with our hands. You can grab down here for more uh, instability while you're doing your exercises. Let's keep that level here. Next up here we have some cam buckles. These are what lock in our main strap so we can keep it at a certain height. Then we have our adjustment tabs right here. We're going to come up, and you can see some adjustment loops right here. Up at the top here, we have an equalizing loop right here. This loop is what prevents the TRX or your suspension trainer from sliding all the way one way and sliding all the way the other way. As you can see, it grabs it. I can no longer hold down on that side. These are going to be different depending on the piece of equipment that you have. Let's get that auto focus in there. Next, we're going to have our main anchor strap, which you can see is connected up to the roof here into my main beams so it doesn't fall on my head. And then we have our adjustment buckle here and we can run it up and down this adjustment strap right here, all the way up and all the way down. Now, if we look at my system right here, this one has a little bit of a different system. I can open the bag here, sorry. The equalizer strap on here is just a normal strap, but it sits in a loop here. And this strap can go all the way down to the bottom of the handle, way down here. That probably wasn't the best of angles there. I apologize. Next up is some safety guidelines that we're going to be looking at. The first thing that you should do before you even use one of these pieces of equipment is make sure it is anchored in. There is a wall or ceiling anchor that I am using here. The, the They should be coming with a door anchor so you can place it into a doorway, close the door, and now you can use your piece of equipment. Some of the things you want to look at is when you're inspecting the belts here, you want to make sure there's no fraying or any type of rubbing going on to make sure that these aren't rubbing together and everything like that. A lot of times these equalizer loops will start to fray the material up here and next thing you know is you're on the ground because the thing collapsed on you. And we want to make sure that we inspect the handles here and make sure that all of our loops are nice and tight. There is no breakage in here because we don't want these to fall apart while we're using the piece of equipment as well. We want to make sure that our cam buckles here are in proper use. There's no fraying going on here. There's no bent material or cracked in the steel. Let's get that back down to the normal height. And for some of you who do not have the equalizer loop up here, you have a free belt loop, which is this one right here, which this loop goes all the way from one handle to the other handle, and all the way across to the other handle. Some, some exercises that you need to use will have a single-handed mode, so you're only gonna be using one handle during the entire exercise. So if you do not have the equalizing loop at the top here, and you need to put this into a one-handle mode, you can easily do that by making sure that you have one handle on top of the other one. The bottom handle goes through the top triangle, and then we just repeat the same process. Bottom handle through the top triangle. And all we're gonna do is pull that nice and tight here, down and tight. And you should have a little mustache sort of handle mode right here. This is the handle that you get to use for your exercises because it's gonna take 
a lot of weight and it is not going to move on you. So setting up your suspension trainer, depending on where you set it up, you're gonna want around eight feet of length and about six feet wide in either direction. If you're using the doorway, you're gonna want the equalizer loop or the top of your suspension trainer around six feet above the ground. And you're gonna want your foot cradles about mid calf shin range. So if we look how I have my suspension trainer set up here, you can see that this equalizing loop right here, it's about six feet. Actually, I should come around this way to the mirror as you can see. It's about six feet uh, from the ground here. As you can see, the foot cradles are about my mid shin range area and the top of this is anchored in up here. As you can see, I can change the height of this all the way up to the very top or all the way down a little bit more. Depending on your height and where you have it mounted, you will have it mounted on a different type of setup here. You can also mount it to the door. If you have a door hanger, you can mount it up at the top of the door. Mounting the suspension trainer on a door is pretty much the exact same way. However, it's just not gonna be hanging straight down. You're gonna be hanging on an angle away from the door. So you can kinda only work on a one dimensional plane there. With this, I can move in any type of direction I want. So the ranges for our adjustments on our suspension trainer are, we're going to have the shortened range, which should, your handle should be about your hip height or at the very top by your equalizer loops. And then we can lower this down to our mid range and our mid range on here. We have two little yellow tabs here, which you get to tell me where my mid range is. I'm just going to lower this one down and this one down. This one is about my mid thigh or mid quad area. And then the very bottom here, I'm going to want to be around my low range, which is mid shin range. Those are the three adjustment styles of the suspension trainer that you are most likely going to be using. Now everybody is different, so depending on where you want to put it, depending on your space, depending on where you are, those tabs can be anywhere along this entire main belt. Okay, now that we have the whole suspension trainer set up, there are six key positions where we're gonna be for most basic exercises. There's three standing ones, and then there's three on the ground. So for the three standing ones, we have, get into position here, we have standing towards the anchor, we have standing away from the anchor, and then we have the side position as well. Okay, from the ground we have facing the anchor, make sure our feet come into our cradles here and they're locked in place. We come down, as you can see, I am facing the anchor. I have facing away from the anchor, Feet come into the loop backwards here. Get this one lined up as well. You can see now I am facing away from the anchor. And my last one is going to be opposite. So this leg and then this leg. And then I have the side version of facing the anchor. Now that we got those six positions out of the way, there's a couple more positions which are going to change the angle of our suspension trainer, which is gonna make it either easier per exercise or harder per exercise because we're gonna be working with or against gravity. So where we have the position of our suspension trainer, it's gonna change the difficulty of the exercise. If we are further away from the ground and more on an angle away, the exercise is going to become easier. If I was doing push-ups, this is gonna be easier. The more vertical I get towards the ground, I do have this in a higher position, it will be lower, the harder the exercise gets because now you're using more body weight and you're fighting gravity more. The same goes if we were doing it the opposite way, doing some rows, the further we are away, the easier it is, the closer that we get to the ground, the harder it gets because we are now using more body weight and fighting gravity more. The same can be done for the bottom position here. When we put our leg into our, our, our feet into our cradles here. This is a neutral position, which is gonna be easier in position rather than if we were sitting in a near position, which would be over here, because from this position, we have to fight gravity more in order to get our body off the ground than if we were in a neutral position. And if we are in a far position, this is going to be a lot easier because gravity is helping us push our legs into our body while doing a hamstring curl. Now that we know our positioning and our angle for our exercises, we can change either to make them easier or harder. 
Another way to increase the difficulty of our exercise while using a suspension trainer is the way that our base is. If we have a wide base, this is going to be a lot easier and more stable to do the exercise than if you have a narrow base. And to make this more difficult, you go on a single leg and do your exercises. You can also offset your foot pattern with one foot forward, one foot backwards, and opposite foot forward, opposite foot backwards, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Now that we have our positioning and our intensity and way to change our intensity out of the way, it's time to get down to setting our standard of how we do our exercises. Using a suspension trainer, it's pretty much doing every single exercise possible in a plank position. You're almost always going to be in some variant of a plank. So we wanna make sure that we have a very stable plank position. And if you actually hold a plank properly, it's actually very difficult because you're using every single muscle in your body flexed under certain conditions to make sure that you do not drop out of that plank. Okay, so what we're gonna to wanna to do is get into a plank position here on our elbows. Get in a nice plank position here. This is what we're trying to avoid. We don't want this with your butt sticking up in the air and we don't want this with your uh, butt and legs and knees and everything kind of on the ground here. So in order to get in this position here, we want to make sure that our calves, our quads, and our glutes are flat, which is going to keep this nice and stable. It's going to keep our lower back and our hip nice and neutral here. So we're not like this and we're not like this, but nice and neutral here. We're going to want to make sure that our core is flexed as well and our shoulders are down and back, which is going to keep us in a nice, very stable position here. Now it's going to look a little different depending on your body type and everything, but this is really well what we're looking for here. And in order to flex your lats, you're going to want to feel like you have an orange in your armpit and you're trying to bring your elbow up and in to squeeze and like you're like trying to squeeze out an orange to get some orange juice. So in this entire position here, flex, core, glutes, everything, you should be nice and straight. Everything right now, like I'm shaking right now. And this is how you should be feeling whenever you're on a suspension trainer because you want to make sure that you're nice and stable. That is the way that you're going to get the most muscle activation and you're going to feel a lot stronger while doing the exercise. Now that we got all that out of the way, I'm going to show you a couple warm up exercises for mobility and then we'll get into our main exercises for our upper body and our lower body. Okay, to start off this mobilization, we're going to be working with our shoulder. We're going to do some field goals. And we're going to want to make sure that our suspension trainer is in the low range, which is going to be mid-shin, mid-calf. We're not going to want to be fully leaned back because we are using some small muscles here and it's a mobility exercise, so it's just to get the blood going. So we're going to want to lean back just a bit. When you row up, you kind of almost want to be upright. And all we're going to do from this position here is just bring our uh, knuckles straight backwards and above our head. And then we're going to go back down and then back over. And we're keeping everything flex, our core and everything to make sure that we don't slump way out here and we don't come way too far forward. It's just a very small exercise just to get the shoulders warmed up. Another good mobilization exercise is some wall angels. We're going to want it in the same positioning, the lower position, mid shin, mid calf. This time we're not going to be holding onto the handles. We're going to put our hands inside of our foot loops at the bottom with our thumb sticking out on either side because we're going to be doing some angels. We're, going to, we're not going to again want to be super leaned in here. We're going to want to be mostly upright. We want to keep tension against this by making sure that our elbows are back and our hands are back and we're just going to go straight above our head and back down. Making sure that again we stay in a very strong plank position and back down. And our last good mobility exercise here is going to be some back extensions. Again, in the same low position, mid-calf, mid-gen. We're going to want to hold the handles here. And we're going to want to lean back as far as we can. You can't see my toes, or my feet, sorry. But we're going to be up on our heels. Lean down and just kind of let everything stretch out. And when you are ready, you're going to be pulling up with your arms, extending through the hip. Make sure we get that really good back extension in there and we're going to come up on our tip and toes into full extension. So I'll show you what that looks like right here. We're going to come down on our heels and come forward, arms overhead, back down, and arms overhead, and back down. 
Really feeling those stretches. Okay, so for some lower body exercises here, we're gonna be doing a squat. You're like, how the heck can you do a squat with this? It's pretty simple. We're gonna to wanna to have a slight lean in our body here. We're just gonna squat down and then straight back up. Squat down and straight back up. Again, this is all body weight here. We're just using this to make sure that we have uh, resistance with gravity going backwards that we have to fight to make sure that we stay in a good position here and then straight back up. It's also a really good way to learn how to squat. And another variant to the squat is a sumo squat. And in order to do the sumo squat, we're going to want to make sure that these are above our head here. Nice and wide. Same thing with our foot positioning. Nice and wide for the sumo position. We're going to want to come back and make sure that we are in a uh, tight position up here. There's no slack in our lines. And we're going to squat down and then squat straight back up, making sure that we keep a nice, strong, plank position and keep your knees back to keep tension on there. Okay, let's get a couple more leg exercises out here. We're going to do some hamstring curls, some hip bucks, and some leg extensions. So for the hamstring curl, again, we're going to make sure this is in the low position. We're just going to put our heels into the foot cradles at the very bottom. We're just going to make sure that we are nice and centered here. We're going to lift our butt off the ground. Nice clearance here on my shoulder blades. And all I'm going to do is bring my heels to my butt. And this is going to lift me up and bring me back down. We can also do hip bucks. Hip bucks, we're going to want to scoot in a little bit, make sure that we have a 45 in our legs here. All we're going to do is hip buck up and back down and touch the ground. And we can hit our quads by doing some leg extensions. A little bit more of a difficult exercise. We want to make sure that our feet are in the cradles here. They're locked in. I'm going to come forward a bit. As you can see, I'm in a nice strong plank position here. Make sure this is even. All I'm going to do is bring my knees into my, into my abs, into my uh, sternum, stomach area. And all I'm going to do is push my butt straight up to the ceiling and back down. Up and back down. And that is going to work my quads with the leg extension. Okay, that was a handful of lower body exercises now out of the way. Let's do a handful of upper body exercises. See you there. Okay, to start off our upper body section, we're going to be starting with our face, facing the anchor. We're going to start off with some inverted rows. What we're going to want to do is make sure that we got this nice and tight. We get in our plank position, and we're going to lower ourselves and let ourselves lean against this rope here. And we're just going to row up to our chest and then back down. We can also invert this, put an underhand grip. You can have the underhand grip from here. It's, you can row in, work your bicep a little bit, or you can just do strict bicep curls and back down and another bicep curl. Inverted, thumbs facing forward, hammer curls. A lot of different exercises that you can do from this position. You can also, let me just untangle this really quick. Get in a bent over position here with our arms facing forward and we can do some lat pull downs, mid range. So you can get up, do your lat and back down, kind of let your butt sink down towards the ground. And then we can do some rear flies. So we're in a front position here and we can fly out, do some T flies, I guess is what you would be calling that, T fly right here. And then some Y flies. Again, there are so many different exercises, you'll just have to experiment with yourself and what you feel comfortable doing. Now, let's flip it around and hit it from the front. Okay, now that I am in the front position here, I am now facing away from my anchor. I can get in a position where I can do some chest presses. These bands are gonna be above my head just like this. And I'm gonna come down to my chest and I'm going to press straight forward and down. Come to my chest, straight forward and down. The closer you are to the ground, the harder it will get. You can also, from this position as well, do some tricep extensions. Come down and then tricep extend all the way out. Down and all the way out. You can also do one more type of chest press, which is going to have your feet in the cradle this time. So instead of us being unstable up top, we are now unstable on the bottom. 
We're just going to make sure we're in this position here, and we're going to come down and then press up, kind of like a uh, decline push-up, working the top of our chest. We can raise these up more to increase the angle, which is going to make it more difficult. Also, in this position here, we work our way backwards with it and put our arms forward and come in and then press out so we can work our shoulder. It's kind of like a shoulder press. It's a little confusing at first, but you do get a good shoulder workout from it. All right, that is it for this video. I do hope you guys find it beneficial and helpful. If you guys did find it helpful, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe for more content, share this with your friends and family. It'd be greatly appreciated. And remember to give it your maximum effort because you're stronger than you think. Now if you excuse me, I need to practice being a wrecking ball.